In this example, I need to solve the inequality and write the answer in interval notation. The inequality is negative 2x squared minus 4x is less than 0. Well, what type of inequality is this? The highest exponent on an x is a 2, so it's a quadratic inequality, which is just a special type of polynomial inequality. And here are the steps for solving polynomial inequalities using the boundary point or critical point method. Step 1 says find the boundary points by changing the inequality to an equal sign and solving the resulting equation. The real solutions of this equation are the boundary points. So looking at my problem, I'm going to change this less than to an equal, so I'm going to have negative 2x squared minus 4x equals 0. So now I have a quadratic equation. Everything's written in descending order on one side, 0 on the other. Is this going to factor? Yes, there's definitely a common factor between these two terms. So I can factor out a negative 2 as well as an x. You factor negative 2x out of negative 2x squared, it's going to leave positive x. Factor a negative 2x out of a negative 4x, it's going to leave plus 2. So this quadratic equation factored. Two factors multiplied together equaling 0, set each of them equal to 0. Negative 2x equals 0. Divide both sides by negative 2. The negative 2's reduce and I get x equals 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. And the second factor set it equal to 0. x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 from both sides. x equals negative 2. So these two values are my boundary points for this problem. So I've now completed step one. Step two says to place the boundary points on a number line in the correct numerical order. This divides the number line into intervals. Here is my number line. And of my two boundary points, which one is the smaller? That's x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2 must be to the left of the other boundary point of x equals 0. And these two boundary points divide the number line into three intervals. One where x is less than negative 2. One when x lies between negative 2 and 0, and 1 when x is greater than 0. So that is step 2 completed. Step 3 says choose one number called a test value from each interval and determine if the inequality is true or false at that value. Select the intervals where the inequality is true. So I'm going to need three test values. The first one, when x is less than negative 2, let's pick x equals negative 3. In the region between negative 2 and 0, I'm going to pick x equals negative 1. And in the region where x has to be bigger than 0, I'm going to pick x equals positive 1. I'm going to put the video on pause for a second. While the video was on pause, I plugged my test values into the original inequality. So when x equals negative 3, I got negative 2 instead of times x squared, negative 3 all squared minus 4 times x, which is negative 3, is that less than 0? Negative 3 all squared is positive 9, so I have negative 2 times 9, and then negative 4 times negative 3 is plus 12, is that less than 0? Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18 plus 12, that's negative 6, is negative 6 less than 0? 
That is true. So I want the region containing x equals negative 3. So I need everything from negative 2 going all the way down to negative infinity. I then plugged in negative 1 into the original inequality, which resulted is 2 less than 0. That was false. I do not want that region. Lastly, I plugged x equals 1 into the original inequality and got negative 6 is less than 0. Is that true? Yes, negative 6 is less than 0. So I need the region that contains the point x equals 1. So I need everything from x equals 0 all the way up to positive infinity. So I've now completed step 3. Step 4 says the boundary points are included in the solution set if the inequality is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. The boundary points are excluded from the solution set if the inequality is greater than or less than and to use parentheses. Well, in our problem, I do not have the equals on my inequality, so the boundary points are excluded, and I'm going to use parentheses. So I'll have a parentheses here on the negative 2 and on the 0. And writing my answer in interval notation, this first interval here starts at negative infinity, which always has a parenthesis. So I have negative infinity to negative 2 with a parenthesis, unioned with my second interval that starts at 0 with a parenthesis and goes all the way up to infinity. So there is the solution to this problem in interval notation.